Like, yeah, like, I like more, like, let me show you my style of, like, uh, podcast intro. <clears throat> Klein Klopp. <laughs> Is that what we're saying? Hmm? Klein Klopp. Klein Klopp. Okay. Welcome back to another episode of Pod Practice. We are excited to have Akane Kleinkopf join us, former Whitman and Quanji player, now Love Tractor and Alpingo player. Uh, this pod was really great. We got a lot of unique perspectives from Akane that we haven't previously had on the. I don't know how else to say it. I don't know. I, I, I yeah, I get, it. I get it. I don't. I guess I don't. Speak for yourself, bro. I've got multiple. I've started putting it in in post instead. Why? But I like listening to it. It is nice because we usually get kids like the head bob. It gets me in the mood. I feel like I'm podcasting. All right. Well, welcome to another episode of Pod Practice. Um, we are your hosts. Um, I'm Coach Mike. This is Alex Atkins. Welcome back, kids. We are without Quinn today, uh, but excited to have Akane in. Hello. Hi, Akane. Hi. How are you today? I'm doing good. I've been moving out of my parents' house, so it's big, big Where are you moving? right now. Um, just, it's just in Boulder. It's like 30th in North Boulder. So you're still going to be able to coach. 30th and North Exactly, Boulder. yes. That's important. I was bummed. I texted you. I was, I was, I, I got know. back from my vacation. I was excited to maybe go to a high school practice and I found out it was spring break. Spring break. No practice. Yeah. So the, I mean, we could talk about that first sure. high school coaching. What part of the season is it for Fairview right now? Um, we're like pre, uh, kind of beginning middle of the season. Um, the spring is single gender or, you know, we split into the open and girls divisions. So yeah, we like just started, we played two games so far, both dubs. Um, we have nice. a tournament coming up in a couple weekends. And then, yeah, States is on May 13th or something. So we're and, kind of It's a travel now. tournament, right? Like you're going to Chicago? Yeah. We, Chicago, yeah, we're going to Chicago. Really? Yeah. So we have one tournament in Colorado before that. And then we ha- we're we traveling to Chicago for Nico Knockout, which is, you know, first time I think Fairy's ever gone. Be yeah, that's a big, big thing for the program. It's weird because yeah. high school ultimate is structured so differently here than where I'm from. Like we don't, we don't, we're, in Philly, we didn't play like week games against other oh, teams. Really? This is tournaments. Yeah. And also uh, like there was no, it's all, there was no mixed high school. Mm. That was new. In the fall. Yeah. That, that's, I don't know. Do they do that in other states as well? Or Seattle's like the opposite, I think. They do mixed in the spring. Spring. Yeah. Um, well, you should mention that you're also a Fairview alum, right? I am indeed. 2016. Yeah. Go, what are they called? Let's go Knights. Let's go Knights. They're the Knights, kind of a boring mascot, you know, but, you know, we'll take it. You know, I God. actually coached Fairview for uh, like three to five practices for one semester. Oh, no way. Um, Elijah was there. Was it Elijah? Um, coaching Eli. Eli, Eli Weber. Eli. Oh my I, god, I think, he's my coach. Um. Oh yeah. I so I I knew him then, and Bob Bob was there, but not. Yeah. I never coached with him. I think Claire was helping out back then too. Oh, that must have been because my sophomore year we had Bob and Claire, and so maybe you were helping with the boys. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I have such a bad memory, but I'm pretty sure Garish was on the team back then. Yeah, I played with Garish. Oh, nice, Good nice, time. nice. Shout out Garish. Yeah, great time. All right, well, let's 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 get into it. You've played for Fairview, Cutthroat, yes. Whitman, Quandry, Love Tractor, Alpenglow. Mm-hmm. Did I miss any? Um. I was a practice player for Molly Brown for like a little bit, but that what that doesn't really count, does it? Um, no, I guess not. But it, but yeah. kind of, it counts yeah. for something. If you, you know, if we're talking about resume, 
yeah. I was an alternate for U twenties, so oh. I didn't play at all or do anything. But my picture was on the website next to all twenty sixteen. I have that on the on the list here. Yes, like yeah, silver medal. But so also silver medal for U twenty, right? In twenty fourteen, do I have that right? I was not there for that. Wow. Okay. Ultimate reference um, needs to update their data. What's ultimate reference? Uh, I'll post the uh, the link in the chat here. Um, but it is like I think someone from Pitt is just huh. pulling a bunch of data from USA Ultimate and other sources to consolidate like everybody's playing perform or what's the word I guess resume Great. in a different way like all the awards they've won and all the uh, teams that they've played for so Kansas probably has the fact that you were like top five Callahan. Let's go. Nice. That's huge. That's I nice. love that. Yeah, that's sick. Um, okay, so what, what what were some of your favorite teams, Akane? Let's start there. Oh, gosh. Every team is different. Yeah. Um, Every team is different. What, strongest memories. Like when I went, even like thinking back at your ultimate career, like what were the most yeah. impactful seasons, teams, coaches, you know, just first things mm-hmm. that come to mind. Well, like high school is like really formative, obviously, in a lot of ways. But that's I started playing my freshman year in high school. And that first year was kind of like, I'm just playing. It's pretty fun. And then my sophomore year, Claire came and coached us. And we had, like I was playing with, um, Caitlin Lee was on my team. We were pretty tight then. And so I learned a lot from her and from Claire and Bob yeah. was there. Um, so that was, I remember that year a lot like my sophomore and junior year in high school was so like, is, I is like gray, I figured is, things out is bob's son gray your age or yeah. a little older he's a few years younger than me oh he's younger wow yeah okay i played with him maybe one or two years but there was one year he played with us he was an eighth grader that makes sense yeah yeah um um so fairview played with caitlin who Mm -hmm. has um gone on to do big things as well Mm -hmm. Uh, wait who is that i don't know who that is she played for dartmouth and plays for brute squad right now maybe i do know who that is won some championships yeah yeah she won she won a couple championships before coach claire did actually finally pulled Mm -hmm. one out this this past season the uh the student became the master for a little while. Yeah. Crazy. But yeah, there's Fairview was big time, obviously, because I was in high school, like just learning. Also, like Quandry this past year, that was like huge for me. I don't know, because I went to Whitman thinking we'd, we'd like win and we didn't. Which win was It was still good. We would like win the championship. D1. Because. College championship. Was Whitman in finals right before you started? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Oh, here we go. It's gonna yeah. be dope." And then I got there, and we didn't really do so well. But you know, it's still like, you know, there's still value, and it's still fun. Um, but I, I really want to win. So it was cool to play for Quandry and play on a really good team and go to the finals. Yeah, that was. Um, I, I rewatched yeah. that game. Maybe Sunday night. Just uh, uh, honestly, planning for this a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a good game. Man, so close. It was Just, a very hard game. Yeah. It was fun, though. Uh, I, well, I'll let you finish your team list before I keep putting us on tangents. Those are, like, I haven't played on a lot of teams, to be honest. So each one is, like, pretty impactful. You know, I have a lot of memories. Yeah. Um. I guess in terms of like people who influenced me, like at Whitman, all four years, Rory Tickham was one of my coaches. So nice. she was a huge like role model for me. Yeah. Um, Did Rory go to Whitman or she? T- no, was- we just had Seattle people. Oh, okay. I think she went to Dartmouth actually. Dartmouth, Dartmouth. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, talk talk about the transition from uh, Whitman to Quandry. Was that did you just graduate or did you transfer? That was I graduated. I was planning on coming to see you for grad school and doing a fifth year anyway. 
Um, but my senior year in college was the COVID, COVID year. like blew up. And then so I didn't get to finish my senior year season. And then I was planning on coming to see you anyway. So then I got to play the fall and spring nationals uh, um, with Quandry, which was cool. Um, yeah, very different vibes. Yeah, um, different, but you loved them both. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think Whitman was cool because we were such a small school. It's very like liberal artsy, you know. Um, but the team was very, like, we didn't have coaches there most of the time because we were in the middle of nowhere. So it, we had to really take ownership of our own team. And like as a captain, it, it like it was really hard to captain. But we planned our own practices, and like it was much more like our team yeah whereas with Quandry like it's still our team obviously but there was we had more coach presence and there's just way more people so you had to make more cuts or you can yeah. make cuts at all um yeah that kind of thing makes it very different and and at at CU you had obviously Claire but Cassie mm -hmm. uh Christina and Christina and, and and was Egan around too yeah, Egan was there kind of, <laughs> she did a lot of like film stuff for us and she was sometimes at practice, but more behind the scenes, I think. I see. Yeah. Uh, it's a good coaching so did, staff though. Yeah. Yeah. It is. For sure. So what, what, what made you want to start coaching? Cause it kind of seemed like when you were talking about Whitman and you didn't have any coaches, you mm -hmm. had to plan your own practices. It seems That's, like some experience yeah. for, for coaching. That definitely helps with coaching. I was coaching like groupy and like little camps and stuff mm -hmm. throughout college. I don't know. I don't know why I was like, I want to be a coach, but I felt like I had a lot of knowledge. And sometimes when you're a freshman or sophomore on the team, you have to like hold back. You can't be like, we should do this. Or like, we should, you know, yeah. implement this. Um, but if you're coaching a bunch of middle schoolers at the summer camp, you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So it's almost like a power yeah. thing for you. Yeah, like definitely. A, like a control. I'm driven thing. by ego and power. Like, like <laughs> well, what do you get out of coaching? <laughs> what What do you like about coaching? Oh, I love coaching. I think it's fun to like think differently or like because when you're playing, you're just like thinking about playing. But as a coach, mm -hmm. you actually have to like step back and and be smart and like. Uh, strategize and you kind of have to like see a bigger picture um which is really hard sometimes but it's really like a fun like mental challenge um also just feels good like when you succeed like obviously in any anything that i do i love succeeding um yeah <laughs> but like when i have kids come up to me and they're like oh like are you coming back because we like you like that feels like really good especially Fulfilling. when it's like a 15 year old boy who can't talk about his feelings you know yeah <laughs> so yeah it's exciting funny. <laughs> it's funny it's funny you mentioned like when you're a player you just focus on playing things i think that was a big thing for me this fall is i decided i was going to be a player that focused on playing and not on yeah. <laughs> looking at like different parts of the game. And it helped a lot. Cause I think I always got caught up in like, kind of like what you're talking about, like different, like, what, what should we be doing on offense? Worrying like, about defense, more like, than you needed to. Right. And I was like, I'm just going to be a player. I'm going to focus on just playing. And, and that is a good piece of advice, honestly, for probably a lot of people. Like I'm sure like once you get to a certain point on your team, like, Maybe you get right. to a point where, like, you know, you're a veteran. You want to talk about, like, X's and O's with the coaches or, like, what the team should be doing at halftime. But, like, at the same time, you, while you're playing, you probably should just be focusing on. Yeah, I think, like, practice Practice is fine to be, like, thinking. You should be thinking really hard and, like, messing up or whatever at practice. But, like, in a game, I'm trying to be, like, no thoughts. Like, just playing just instincts. Play. Like, yeah. If I have too many thoughts, then I just I can't do it anymore. So, yeah, someone should have told me that. <laughs> that's oh, really, I'm sure somebody really, did at some point. Right, that's true. <laughs> I probably didn't listen to him. No, that's it's it's honestly really good advice. It's it's really good. Yeah. Um, it, it, Atkins really has mentioned this about himself that it was a big, um, growing point for him this fall, where um, and not only for himself but 
helping teammates in the sense like he was not over communicating. Not that you can't, you know what I mean? Like you, he's not mm-hmm. over coaching as a, as a teammate. No, it's, that was definitely part of it. It's like, yeah, it's all tied up, like less feedback for the teammates because I wasn't worried about, and that, yeah, that's the same thing. Like coaches give advice and tell people what they should be doing. And like, I was completely flipped that mindset and it is so yeah. helpful. Yeah. yeah. Even as a coach and, and a kind of, you pro- can probably, probably relate, um, it is our job to instruct and and tell people things and mm-hmm. what, let them know what they can be doing better. But sometimes the trick is to, to say nothing and let them figure yeah. it out themselves. Like f- finding those moments is tough, especially if you feel like you have the answers. Um, yeah. But sometimes like sometimes a player just needs to try it and fail and then figure it out. Definitely. I think it's also fun like to watching them figure it out and like yeah. collaboratively figure it out. Like sometimes yeah. I coach like our boys a team right now and a lot of them have been playing for a really long time. And so sometimes it's a problem how they give each other feedback, but sometimes like they can point things out before I even have to say anything like, Hey, we should be doing this cut this way. Like we should drive out into space and then make a move. And so I don't even have to say anything and they're coaching each other, um, which can be good and bad, but it's fun to like watch them like figure it out yeah. and like, help each other if, as long as it's like constructive and helpful. Yeah. So what's your policy on giving feedback at practices as a coach? Like when I'm giving feedback? Or if you're going to give feedback or when you're giving it, like just policy on overall like, yeah, if like what's it look like for you? Yeah. If you're going to give feedback to someone, uh like when you're going to give it to them and how you would give them okay. to them. Basically like all the questions on like Yeah. What, so and we can do it. We can break it down into like four quadrants. No, it's such yeah. a good question and I, I think about it a question. lot. I was thinking about it a lot after nationals cuz I think now thinking about it in like terms of this discussion, there's kind of four quadrants that you guys could put it in this like as a coach at practice and there's at a coach like at a tournament let's say like in a game and then there's as a player in practice and then there's as a player in a game and i think Mm -hmm. they're somewhat similar but definitely different because different players have different roles on the team but you still may know something so it's just like and you're more of a peer if you're a player Mm -hmm. whereas a coach has a little bit more of a so Mm -hmm. like and maybe if you haven't thought about it that much, you know, this could be a good time to yeah, it's a great think question. about it a little bit more. Cause I've, I I've feel like I, about a little bit. I feel like I haven't thought like, you know, directly about this, but I have like observed that I give feedback differently from other people sometimes. Um, I think like at practice as a coach, if it's something that everyone is messing up or like not understanding, I'll stop the drill and be like, here, like, here's a tip, try it. Or here's just something you can try. You don't have to. Um, If it's something that like one person is messing up, like, like repeatedly, I try to find times that's not like disrupting their drill. Like if they're like walking back to the line, I'll maybe pull them aside and be like, hey, try this. Or after the drill is over, if it's, if, it's appropriate, you know, to do after a drill, then, it, then I'll give feedback then. Yeah. You kind of um, have to I read think the it's room hard. a little bit. Yeah. It's hard with like individuals. Um, if they're doing like a group thing to be like, Hey, you, like you're doing this wrong. Like come talk to me, you know? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I try to find like, you know, gaps to like be like, Hey, like come over here, you know? Um, so that's at practice. And a lot of times people like I have kids come up to me and they're like, how should I do this different? Yeah. And I'm like, well, let's think about it. Um, yeah, I also just, I think in general, like I try to give, I think I give a little bit less feedback than I could just cause like there are my, the boys I coach are always like telling each other things that they could be doing, it's which like I don't want to overwhelm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'll, if it's like a specific, like really obvious thing, I'll, you know, I'll bring it up. But otherwise I just kind of let them figure it out. 
and then wait for them to come to me because I get a lot of times at practice or after practice they'll be like hey Connie like I'm really struggling with this thing and I'll be like oh we can actually work on that together without everyone here yeah um yeah and then during games I like doing giving feedback like between points on the sideline like when people are not actively engaged in something else like especially with high school it's important that you're the the attention span is like crazy sometimes. Not fully so I have to find good moments. Yeah. My attention span is still like that, honestly. It's yeah. all over the place. Yeah, yeah I've that... coached with people who like will be like shouting feedback from the sideline like during scrimmage. I hate that. Practice. It's so annoying. And I, I, it's hard for me as another coach just standing on the sideline not doing anything to be like, oh God, you know, like That's it's so, so hard. Cringy to visualize what you're talking about or understand what you're saying at all. So yeah, that's that definitely an example of not helpful feedback. <laughs> like I love when people are like, you're in midpoint and like, yeah. maybe you are doing something incorrectly and they're like yelling at you from the sideline to like yeah. switch how you're playing. It's just so unhelpful. And but, then you get, then you get all like stuck in your mind and then you just like get roasted right. deep or something. And it's oh, like, I wow, just think, now I don't I, know what to do. I mainly ignore people from the sideline. <laughs> I would say. I'm like what about the marking mostly, shifts from TK? Yeah, like I'll listen to that for sure. But at, for the most part, like I understand now what the right. marking shift is going to be, so, so I don't even necessarily have to listen to it. But yeah, if I hear him call something out, I'll definitely switch it up. I like the philosophy of give data points, like mm. give information, like let people know where the disc is on the field, things like that. Mm-hmm. And then let the player use that information um, to the best of their abilities uh, sure. based on everything we've worked on. I think that's helpful. On. Yeah. That um, seems to be the best route. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, you know, people are playing. At some point, they just have you just have to let them play. Yeah. And I would say that's not even that does that's honestly a separate class because that's not really feedback. That's just right. yeah, it's a different kind information. of information. Yeah. It's just like help on the sideline. But no, practices. We'll, we'll going back, we'll hone in on just the practices. Practices are interesting because I feel this way. You know, even at like elite club, which is that there's so many things that I want to tell people all the time, mm-hmm. like a million times, doing everything, drills, like on different things that I think people could be doing better. Um, And so definitely even like going to high school practice or like if I go to a bird practice, it can be overwhelming because there's Mm -hmm. like when I went to the Fairview practice, like there's a million things I could be telling these kids to do differently that they're Mm -hmm. not doing well, like in the drill and how they're playing. And it's like, you know, like obviously you're not going to do that. So having a, having a like outline of what, feedback you're gonna give is probably like super important because yeah you need some criteria for like what feedback you think is gonna help certain people and like when you're gonna give yeah. it to them. right because it's so individualized the the what comes to mind is the the mental model piece so when we when we run a very specific pattern at practice we always talk about stacking skills and uh like again I've used this example before, but the most basic pattern that we might run is like a vert stack drill where the disc is trapped on a sideline. You swing it to somebody and then you break the mark to like the downfield, like the five in the Mm -hmm. stack or something. And, and at a minimum, like for the general audience, it's like, if all, if you can only focus on just the sequence of events, that's good. So like the thrower reset, cut her down field. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can stack another skill, then for us, it might be like, if you're throwing the swing, make sure it's a direct pass, like hit that person in the strike zone with, we, we like to say like with speed so we can beat the defense, uh, with the pace of the throw. And if you can add another skill, then it might be if you're that person catching the reset, we have this specific footwork we like to talk about, that, which is like an inward turn. So mm-hmm. you can turn and see the field. It's hard to sort of talk about um, on the pod, especially without yeah. visuals for the listeners. 
kins unless you can describe it no i think i think what you said just like I when you're catching right. a horizontal reset you yeah. turn in a way that allows you to scan the field instead of turning in a way yeah. that like your back is to most of the field and then like another mm-hmm. scale would be like if you're the continue cutter from the back of the sacks like timing you know better late than never or better late than early is the typical saying and and you can continue stacking skills so it's like those are the those are just like level one to level Mm -hmm. two but um you know there's even both of you as players who have been playing for many years and are nationals level national club nationals level players you can still get something else out of it that you know we could stack another skill on top of it Right. You can get even more nuanced. And I've definitely remember talking to someone about this, which is probably Buck, and thinking about it in the sense that in an ideal world at practice, like everyone could be it's not that you're just like giving feedback to everyone, but you could be like talking about everything. So essentially like mm-hmm. giving feedback. Like, yeah, sure, not like in the moment of the game, but like if you have time, like ideally, like if I kind of thought I was doing something wrong. Like you could just come up to me, we could talk about it and maybe I could get it better. Cause that would be the quickest way right. to like raise everybody to a certain level. Right. So that's like in an ideal world, but then in like an emotion human world, like it's actually, <laughs> yeah. you're almost Very like well. never, yeah. there's people can't handle like feedback. And yeah. so it's this weird balance that you're trying to figure out where like you want your team culture to be accepting to giving and receiving feedback. But also, how realistic is it to give and receive like a ton of feedback? Because a lot of like yeah. a lot of times people just can't handle it. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's such it's seen as such a personal attack on you if you were like if someone thought you were doing something not correctly. Yeah. We this came up actually a lot when I was at Whitman because we didn't have coaches at most right. practices, but we had to like it's like very ingrained in me to ask if I can, if it's okay to give feedback. Um, Even like as a coach, when all of the boys are like, yeah, obviously give me feedback. And I'm like, that's what you're here for. Sorry. Like, (laughs) yeah. Like, can I, can I tell you a little tip? And and they're like, yeah, duh. Um, But I do that. That was, yeah, I think it's important. I think it's still good. Um, I don't do that. Yeah. We really had to ask each other (laughs) at practice. Cause like, that was the only way any of us were getting any coaching. Like we had to do it ourselves but like your peers and they're like friends and if i'm like hey like you're doing this bad that that, that's not gonna work so i have to do you have any pet peeves that set you off like that cause you to lose your patience i can give a couple examples of myself but i'm curious if you have any off the top of your head um off the top of my head i hate it when this isn't really feedback but if i mess up on the field or in practice or whatever and it's like obvious you know like i missed a throw or you know even if it's not if i mess up a through turnover or something and everyone's like you're fine it's okay yeah. like good job i fucking hate that like you just tell me to... to get on defense like yeah. tell me like you don't need to like get down on me but like you know so like, i should tell you you suck if you you could away. i think it i think it'd be kind of funny you'd respond you to that you know, get me out of my head yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah maybe it'll take kind of like, like a dry joke <laughs> Yeah, if people are like, "Oh, it's okay," like you're doing a great job, like I yeah, hate it's that a shit. little like, patronizing. Yeah. Uh, what so, about like, like what are the a... expectations of of me as a person if I yeah. do a bad turn and everyone's just like, "It's okay." Like, yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it's not okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah, it wasn't. Like, okay. I'm not okay with that. Like, we're trying to win. A, maybe it was a really bad <laughs> yeah. execution or like a really it's bad. Not decision. okay when we're trying to win. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just maybe it's not okay. What about, what about like as a coach though, when you're, you know, you're in the yeah. setting where you're, you're trying to stay positive, good feet, give feedback, but like mm-hmm. there's something that, something that your boys do that just like fucking grinds your gears. Is there anything like that? There's nothing specific that like gets me really angry, but I mean, obviously when people talk, when I'm talking, I am just like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what do you even want me here? You know? And I will say that to yeah. them and be like, Hey, like, do you guys want to keep talking or like, should I shut should up? I go you know? home. And they'll yeah. be like, Oh shit. McConnie's talking. And I'll be like, okay, thank they you. They don't even notice. Um, That's something I realized when, when I was there is like, we were like standing around ready to talk and see yeah. people are just like talking and doing whatever. Yeah. Like, it's like, Can you talk have you been going? Uh, I've only gone to one this oh, year. Okay. I went one in the fall. 
So yeah, they'll I'm keep talking. I've gone to two stop. now. <laughs> right. That's a good thing, a good culture to build for a team. Yeah. If you have, we're if about anybody to talk, has any like, good suggestions um, on how to get people to shut up, I would love to hear yeah, them. I'm not, that's not usually, it's usually my temper will flare in those moments or, or, or we'll have a, a, another coach at practice who's a little bit better at handling those situations than I am Just to get the focus people quiet thing down. Too. Yeah. Cause I get that you want to talk about something. Like most of the time, it's like, you were just doing a drill. You were just doing a scrimmage. Something just happened. Two players are like talking about it. At least that, like, that's something I would notice that like, I mean, in high school they're talking about who knows what, like whatever they're fucking talking about. But like, it, like I don't like a Bravo practice or something. Like something just happened. People are going to talk about it. And so I understand that feeling of want to wanting to talk about whatever happened. But then you have to realize that like, it's distracting for everyone else yeah. who's there, and you just like have to wait. Right. Yeah. However long I think, it is. I think the thing that makes me actually the most mad is when I'm trying to give feedback. Oh, like to be talking to the group and I'm like giving feedback that's helpful for everyone, but really like pointed for like one person or two people yeah. specifically. Oh, yeah. And they're the ones not paying attention. Oh, I'm my like, gosh. Hey, like you're the one that's like fucking up right now. <laughs> yeah. Like you have to pay attention to what I'm saying out of And everyone. those things are yeah. probably correlated though, to be, <laughs> to yeah. be fair. Yeah. You know, the fact that they're not paying attention and also the ones (laughs) fucking shit up. Because, like, it's so, I don't know. Feedback is this whole, like, mess of a, Mm. like, topic. I think uh, we need, like, a document created on, like, because obviously, like, one thing a lot of teams have been on talk about is, like, okay, most practices you have a specific focus. So, like, maybe we limit the feedback given at that practice. To that. To feedback pertaining Mm -hmm. to that focus. Yeah. But. Like at the same time, there's definitely situations where you want to give feedback to another player about something completely Else. different. Yeah. And when do you give that feedback? And how? Yeah, it's, it's pretty contextual to the person too. Like, can they handle that mental overload? Some people cannot. Um, right. Some people, some people, I mean, yeah no i mean it's a lot to think about and then because then it's like well are you just gonna never give feedback like are you just never gonna tell anyone and just like trust <laughs> just trust. Because that's like one thing like i mean i think at tournaments like, especially as a player if we're doing like the player perspective mm-hmm. like that's where i got at nationals was i was just like i'm just not gonna tell yeah anyone anything or if i really have something because that's the thing is like i'll have stuff that pops into my head like every point and i want to talk about it but i decided to just wait like i was gonna wait however long and pretty much 99 percent of the time that dissolved into me deciding i wasn't you didn't need to yeah i didn't need to say and and an interesting thing last thing real quick that i noticed about that was most of the time when i had feedback and this might just be a me thing and i don't it might happen to other people most of the time that i wanted to give feedback it was about something that i actually felt Oh yeah. I needed to be yeah. doing better yeah. and I wanted to like share that with everyone and like express it. Like I think the funniest example of that was like we were playing machine and we were beating them and I had started to like say a few things and like just like mess with them a little bit and then I got to the point and I was like no, we shouldn't do that. Like we shouldn't be like we should just like no need to say anything like let's just and I was like going to tell people Hey, let's like not let's stop talking shit. Like let's yeah. let's not chirp them anymore and let's just win the game. And I sat on it for a little bit and I was like, oh wait, like no, like that's yeah, definitely me. Like that's if I stop my, doing my that help. myself, that'll be like 95% of the shit that's Are being you ever said. do you ever like get really mad about, you're like really mad about something and you wanna you're pissed at somebody and you you type type out an email to them and then just don't press send? It's yeah, it's a good like, idea. I don't do it. Um Probably for safety, don't put their email address in there either in case you accidentally press send. Mm-hmm. But it is kind of a good exercise to like help you blow off steam and get your thoughts on the paper and materialized. Right. Right. Um, and then like, you know, you find out the next day if you sleep on it, it maybe it wasn't as big of a deal or or at least not to the point where you need to create a conflict about it. Yeah, because you're just so emotional in the moment. But yeah. as soon as that emotion starts to subside, like you realize it's not. And even if it's 
like I think there's still room to like you know if someone made you really upset you should probably say something but it's always better to like have that being coming from a place of like reason in your head and not uh, and that's like I feel like people talk about this a lot with like Twitter and just like social medias in general like it's so easy to just respond to people so quick like you see something and like 30 seconds later like you type the first thought that came into your head like it probably wasn't the most yeah well thought out response that could have been said but now it's out there for everyone to see and you just like said some crazy (laughs) shit because you were super pissed because someone like it's just the it's out there it is forever. a good exercise though just yeah. like I've all been of our thinking about this a lot the like chat like talking on the field and stuff but recently i've started going the opposite direction i Were feel you... like in in women's especially like there's like well obviously like just in our society in our culture like women are socialized to be quiet and like accommodating mm-hmm. and and in frisbee especially with like this whole spirit of the game thing like Oh, like let's be like really nice, and if someone calls something, like don't contest, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I found myself like, I found myself like wanting to talk to it. Like I'm not gonna get like explosively <laughs> like reactive, but like I like I'm competitive. I'm not gonna like tamp down my emotions, responses, yeah, and my emotions, and like I'm not gonna like let myself blow up because that doesn't help either. But I feel like there's got to be yeah. a little bit there and which in especially like in women's sports or i guess in women's frisbee at least there's a lot less like trash talking and like less of like that kind of stuff and like i'm not saying that we should necessarily have it but it's, but it's i'm trying to it's compete all good fun. like yeah i also like it's not like i'm like personally mad at people but like, there, yeah there's a term it's gonna get out of people's skin and if it's going to like fire me up and like why not as yeah. long as i'm not being like totally it's mean so to yeah it's so hard to figure out because it's sometimes most of the time i i kind of am maybe I, there's either it stems from two things like either like yeah i think you did something really dumb and i'm joking with you or i am actually like personally i think you're annoying or i think and just like in <laughs> it's the usually game the second know? one for me <laughs> yeah like i think it's both like i love i love like if someone throws a bad pull or something, like I love mm-hmm. being like you. Why are you the one pulling? Like, dude, like <laughs> as you're like walking up, everyone's like <laughs> walking like down the field. They're like, but a lot of it. But then I get it. It, it is a, it, it's a, it's an ethical dilemma for me to say the least. Yeah. As someone who, like, is how much motivated, shit to talk? Well, or if you should be talking shit at, at all, because in my calm, like, quiet mind like chilling in my by myself i'm like i don't want to just like be mean to people and like yeah say mean things to people but then like you put me out on a game and i'm like this super competitive <laughs> like egotistical like hardo like i'm like extremely motivated to like say some shit to you and sometimes and, like, sometimes you cross the line yeah i mean yeah, i don't some, say I mean, like, i'm not saying like all the time i, but I think my happens. stuff is a little wittier like i don't just say like heinous shit <laughs> yeah like, i not. don't i don't just like call people like 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 bad just like crazy words or like yeah, some yeah. Shit. i think maybe i do honestly like and it just comes out and i don't remember it <laughs> I, don't, I don't think i do though i don't just say like i don't just go straight to the like messed up curse words i usually yeah, yeah. am just like you know yeah and i don't know i don't know what the i don't know what the line is because also like as much as me that doesn't want to like i i I love the like silent killers who just don't say anything and Mm. are grinding and don't need to say shit like i don't know if i can like change (laughs) who i am yeah (laughs) Uh, that's my favorite type of person although i i appreciate the uh more boisterous players as well uh, I think I always grew up in really, I liked like the, uh, the John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, Ronan Kawhi, <laughs> Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi, Kawhi, sure. Um, something you said earlier kind of though, was making me think of spirit scores when you, when you were talking about, um, how women generally are quieter and general generally yeah. less likely to contest things. I think is I don't know exactly. Yeah, that might how you be a generalization, it. yeah, but no, it's okay. It seems that um, way to me. Um, have you ever noticed? I've uh, if you look at the, like average averages of spirit scores across divisions, mm-hmm. generally women's spirit scores are lower than mixed, and mixed lower scores are lower than men's. 
even though men's are probably like the most aggro outwardly right. and physical. I don't know what the reason is. And I, I should say this is somewhat anecdotal because this is just me. Usually when I look at spirit scores, like at nationals, I just peek at the averages and, and over the years I've noticed this, but I haven't, I don't have a document or anything. That would be mm. so good. That'd be so interesting. To That's so that. interesting. Cause spirit of the game is so subjective and like so vague. Like there's, it's just like some really vague sentence about like, yeah. Sportsmanship. And, and it doesn't it also doesn't mean any like if if the whole division is consistently rating on like right. a, the same scale, it doesn't matter. Um but it is it is it always just stood out to me as a curious. That's, yeah, thing. that's super interesting. Well, because I've noticed like especially like playing like youth girls, like when we did spirit scores, we didn't understand what they were. And we'd be like, Oh, were they nice? They were nice. Let's give them like really high scores. And it's like you shouldn't have to be nice to get spirits, good spirit scores. Like if you know the rules and you're calling people on them, then you might even get lower spirit scores because you're seen as like, yeah, this like yeah, mean true person who's calling a lot of fouls, even though you're just trying like, to play it by the rule book. Right. Yeah. And like the knowledge of the rules is like also like kind of subjective sometimes. Like what is a foul? People don't know. People don't know the rules, first of all. Oh yeah. So it's it, like how don't, we, don't get us uh, started on this one. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about this yeah. a little bit. Like that's that's I I realize like going back to like the trash talking thing, I don't actually like talk very much to like people's faces unless they're like made a bad call and I'll be like, hey that's kind of soft. Like don't learn the rules. Like that's that's my main chirp is that calls are soft. Yeah, but. yeah. I'm I'm honestly generally a kind of a pushover. It's pretty easy <laughs> to convince me to take something back. <laughs> you are a pushover. <laughs> I agree with that. But actually, one time when I did get upset was, and I was. It turns out I was wrong. It, uh, when when Kins and KJ Koo went up in 2021 Fall Nationals, and Kins, mm-hmm. you effed up your knee. You somehow played later, and I was living. <laughs> And yeah. the whole time you're like, it wasn't from KJ. I, I just landed weird. And I, I know. Was like, and you guys were gaslighting me. All of the coaches <laughs> in the cars were gaslighting the fuck out of me. Like, I didn't know what happened. Like, I have zero body awareness and like, know what happened to my yeah. You guys were all like, no, it wasn't great. And like, I, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't great because he landed on me, whatever. But that, I honestly had no problem with what he did. It was completely like my poor knee strength, I guess, that it was a led freak to that thing. injury. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like talking to the observers and just like being pretty upset that they weren't going to give him a PMF. And I, I, I was not really upset at KJ in terms of, I still thought he was a good guy. I didn't think it was um, intentionally bad or egregious. It just like that, it just looked dangerous and you fucked up your knee. And I was, I was probably thinking not only about that tournament, but like we have another nationals in less than six months. Mm. <laughs> and, if we lose, yeah. if we lose Atkins, then what are we gonna do? That was a lit play. Yeah, that that grab. Man, I, I fucked I, up my knee and caught it. Yeah, <laughs> and we almost won. But okay, let's go back to. Uh, well, I like the feedback thing, but I don't know if we're ever gonna mm-hmm. really yeah. narrow down. Well, yeah, can I can I actually lead us in a direction here? Because we're we're forty minutes in here. I'm sure we'll touch on a lot of this stuff, but I'd love to talk a little about. A little bit about Alp and Glow before we. Oh yeah, for sure. Bef- before we uh, lose you for the evening, um, yeah, like it's like, what's the experience been like so far um, compared to club, and and how was the first game? Like, what was the feelings uh, yeah. around it? It's been very different from club, at least from like Tractor, because we our practices have been like big practice weekends, like once a month kind of thing yeah um so they're very like first of all like taxing on the body and also just like yeah. there's a lot of information at once and then we don't practice for a while oh yeah or see each other so that's really hard but it's like a necessity because we have a few like travel players and i don't know it just kind of makes sense i guess logistically to do it that way um, so that's been different. Also, like the the timing, the timing is like the biggest thing that's different. I think like the stall is seven. We only have I don't even know how much time we have between points, but it's not very. Uh, do you yeah, do you, you do your own stalling, right? Is that right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, 
but the observer like also does it okay so there's very few like um upheld stall calls if they're um, incorrect i know you mean yeah like most of the time it's like a not not a stall that comes back there were a few stalls um, in your game though against utah yeah there were but it's because like a lot of us haven't played before and we stall seven yeah. forgot that yeah. the stall was seven um so that was like probably the biggest thing in our game too like the game was probably the hardest game i've ever played in my life like from a physical standpoint really i was so tired um because if i had to play back-to-back points if we get scored on especially i'm like sprinting eight yards back. to get back yeah. on the line yeah and the field is like the field is only 10 yards longer um but the, i think the timing is really there's no time to rest right yeah we noticed the same um, things in the AUDL. well i don't because i'm on the sidelines <laughs> but that's what the players talk about the, the fatigue factor and the, the fast pace of everything uh, so yeah when you do have to play back to backs um like if you get broken is it the same line that goes out or do you have that figured out yet as a team um i think we have like a policy but it's by the actual game i things maybe devolved a little bit we have a we have an o line that like if we start on o they're going out yeah and we have a d line and then we have a swing line so like if the o gets broken if if it's like once or maybe twice then the swing line will come on and play offense and if the d line breaks then the swing line will come and try to get another break kind of thing um but there's I'm not sure how strict that was in the game, especially because people were like dropping with injuries and yeah. stuff. And it was the first and, game. Yeah. That's the idea anyway. Um, how was Utah as an opponent? They were good. They were fast. They played like a simple like bird sack, but yeah. they just did it really well. I thought Kat, Kat Songer looked really good. Yeah. She, yeah. They they were all very just like fast and they were doing everything that you need to do to like successfully do a vert stack basically mm-hmm. and like we were meanwhile trying to do this like kind of split spread thing that I think a lot of us haven't done it's a before newer. yeah and we they haven't were... played together very much and so it was like very hard on offense to figure out like what was going on. Um, but yeah, I think those are the differences. They were Utah was an interesting opponent, though. They were we a lot of us went in probably like you know naively being like, oh, they don't have as much like skill, but they were very like conditioned and did the simple things very Chem- well. Chemistry. Altitude, yeah. Well, yeah. are they even higher than we are? Uh, they might be. I don't know. <laughs> um, they but keep be. it simple, stupid, sort of like they just did. Yeah, they did it super well. well. Um, like you just called Utah Ultimate stupid. Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. That's like you know, yeah. Gonna, I mean, I did, but that's a every that. the so, better the better way the better the more stupid you can be the, the better in my opinion. Okay, I I I went onto the 2019 Club National Spirit scores and I took the average from each division and Mikey, your hypothesis checked out for oh, this dude. one. Okay. Yeah. That makes the, a lot the, of sense to me though. The women the women's division was below ten. Just under. Just below. But below ten. Whereas <laughs> yeah, I do wonder what the reason is. at ten point four. And men's is at ten point eight. I don't know. I have a bunch of different hypotheses that I had yeah. some theories too. Into my head. Uh, I feel like men's has more like seems to have more aggression or whatever agroness both like in terms of like physicality and like words but that's like an expected like normal right. thing about sports right that's whereas thing, like sure. it's the baseline women's sort of. i think like a lot of people a lot of people i know haven't played at very many other sports right than ultimate and like the yeah the base the baseline is different that for like aggression and for physicality and so anytime if if they're all playing the same then this women's spirit score is going to be way lower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you, men- hi- you mentioned Go something ahead. earlier about uh, general rules knowledge that was uh, interesting to me. I don't know if that's a factor, but if, if there are fewer women who have been playing longer, then they may not know the rules as well. 
mm-hmm. and and sort of assume that if somebody is telling them the rules that they're being unspirited um and i i don't i don't think that is specific to gender but it it is something that could play a factor in how you would rate another team yeah i also have a hypothesis that maybe the men care the least about doing this yeah spirit, that could like, out the me too. Like, whatever <laughs> and yeah. so they just fucking whatever boom 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 it's over and maybe some other people take more time into a spirit out. score yeah i think um, that makes sense yeah. too um okay i wanted to ask you kind of as someone who now plays professional women's ultimate and also sure. club mixed ultimate you know do you prefer one over the another mm. is one more difficult uh for any you know, different ways you want to yeah. go with it, but Great question. some questions like that. I think, well, I've been playing like women's, at least like in college, like, you know, women's uh, division for a lot longer. So I know yeah. I feel more comfortable with it. Um, and like, I can throw hooks and they often, more often get completed um, because I, I know how to throw yeah. to women i know how to see the field and like where the defenders are yeah whereas in mix like i have a really hard time like knowing when i can and can't throw hucks especially because there's always some big guy like lurking and then he just right. eats up the the shot and i'm like what like this was a sure goal in my the mind spacing like, is a lot different yeah yeah right. it's very strange it's very hard to adjust to um it's I think it's harder for me playing mix, but it's like because it's hard, it's like fun challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And I like playing with men because like A, a lot of times they're like huge and I can throw like shit up in the <laughs> air and they'll come get it. And I can yeah. do it on purpose. Yeah. So yeah, like the, that is cool. the vertical range of like what I can throw is is more yeah like expansive, obviously. Yeah. Um, so that's fun. And then yeah, also just like when guys get like really fired up, it like it like gets me going. <laughs> just a different vibe. Yeah. Um even if it's like Who gets the negative. most fired up? Who gets the most fired up? Um uh, out of teammates, know. men and women. So who who are some of your who are some of your most fired up? I want to ask. Let's, let's go team by team. Okay. Let's go team by team. Love Tractor uh, first. Okay. Love who Tractor Who comes to first. mind? Who, who's the, who's Wait, the can emotion? We end with, can we actually end with Love Tractor? Because I have a couple okay. of Love Tractor questions. Okay. Let's start with uh, Quandry. Andre. Who was, who were these some of the emotional <laughs> leaders of the team? I definitely think I was. Um nice. Like in terms of like like let's get fucking fired up. Um Let's go. So, yeah, Bailey Bailey is good at motivating. Um I'm trying to find cuz a lot of my teammates do it like very intentionally and like very like okay, now's the time to do it. But some people, it feels more like natural, you know. Um, Raw. Yeah. Because there is something beautiful about some raw emotion, some uncooked emotion. Yeah, I love it when people just like scream. Like that's like great, you know. Go for it. I um. Yeah. What about? I'm throwing names out. How about Britta? Yeah. Britta. Britta is is an emotional leader, but she's very like positive. Uh, Let's go, like. Yeah. Um, what about Stacy? Very bubbly and like uplifting. Yes, Stacy kind of is okay. Yeah, Stacy. I will... could see Stacy as someone. Stacey not only just good... like a large presence, but just like as someone who does other sports, competitive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and she knows how to like if she does something awesome, like she knows how to be like, I'm the fucking shit. Yeah. You tiny person on the ground. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. Stacey's My a good one. favorite player on the team to watch right now and. I'm starting to watch more and more Quandry um, is yeah. uh, Khalil. Am I saying that right? Yes. Khalil. Yeah. Khalil is. She's incredible. Insane. Yeah. She's a, yeah, she's a I, workhorse. She's, like yeah. she's like, and doesn't really everything. say that much like in terms of emotion, but she like, you can see how hard she's working and it's like, Oh shit. Like we got it. I feel like she just runs all over yeah. the field nonstop yeah. and it's ridiculous. Like, yeah. As a it's- thrower, I'm just like, Oh, where's Cleo? Like, let yeah. Just give it to her. Right. Cause everyone has those players that is a thrower. You're yeah. kind of, you're looking to first and also that you trust more than others yeah. to, cause some people just, you know, some people have that 
intensity of wanting the disc. Like, you know, some people are going to yeah finish that undercut or whatever cut and you just have so yeah, much more She's going to get that thing. That. She is a yeah. monster. <laughs> she is whack. a monster. Um, she had, she skied someone in finals of Northwest challenge. <laughs> yeah. I saw um, that one though. <laughs> like oh, over yeah. the top. Like. And congrats <laughs> by the way to, to quandary oh, yeah. for that Northwest Go buffs. The uh, NWC, what do you call it? Northwest Challenge? Northwest yeah, Cup? Yeah, Northwest Challenge. Northwest Challenge. Yeah. Champions. Would, you know they... who she kind of reminds me of, Cleo? Yeah. As a as a as a player comp. T- Tyler Monroe. Because she because Tyler Monroe <laughs> also like stomps all over the field. Cleo stomps. Yeah, sure. She's a stomper. <laughs> and Tyler Monroe was like a stomper where like not the most uh, he plays on truck stop Akane and he's oh, okay. not he so he's not the most athletic dude on the field, but damn it if he's not trying he's, the absolute hardest. And, and I he's feel super like that effective. With Khalil too. Like I just feel like Is Khalil not athletic though? She seems she's pretty super athletic. athletic. <laughs> Even that is like a form of athleticism, you know, yeah. like trying harder and that, being yeah. able to try harder. Yeah. Like I just think it's like like I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure like Cleo would test well if we like were doing a combine and whatnot. But like I don't know if she would like win every category. Like if she's like that, but she's fucking trying super hard and running around. I don't know. Constantly, I don't know why. Like yeah. I think of that yeah. comparison uh, as someone. Um, yeah, she's just so solid, so consistent. Anyway, I totally took us off track because we're we're talking about teammates, right? That pump yeah. kind of up. I don't. Oh I don't, yeah. But, hell yeah. Let's go off yeah. the fucking um well can i actually Ohio. let's maybe i will just i'll ask the uh the love tractor question sure. um do you, well do you have any teammates specifically before i ask when that comes to mind he, um well jimmy is very like emotional sometimes like when people make jimmy calls, can't well. get jimmy can't well yeah and Sometimes I think it's funny. Uh, like I don't want I don't mean to like belittle him because I think he would not appreciate that. But like it's sometimes right. he'll like Jimmy really well. get into it. He'll get, like really get into it over a call. And I just think it's so funny sometimes. And it really gets me going to like see how upset he's making people and see how upset he is about like one little thing. Um, oh yeah. He kind of knows in that he's kind way. of aware of his flaws and just has accepted them. Yeah, and he just doesn't care. He just like does it. And I think it's great. Like he'll just be like, bro, like, whoa, like that was a terrible call. And like, let's talk about it for a really long time. Um He is a lawyer. He's too. One, yeah, that comes to mind. What else? Who else is there? Jack when he gets going is like Yeah. Whoa. Who's Jack? Jack, um, Jack McShane. Jack McShane. Jack, um, Jack is who I want to ask you about, actually. But I'll let yeah. you finish your thought if you if I um, haven't completely who else is there? stopped it. No, yeah, I think those those are the two that come to mind really when it comes to, to um, being fired up. But Jack, Kins, do you actually not know who Jack is? The legend. I've heard of him. I was mostly asking just to like elaborate. So oh, okay. okay. So Jack, Jack about, is, but I don't really know who he is. I've would, heard of him. I know like Bob said like once that, like, I guess like Quinn would always tell me that like Bob said that like he was the best player in Colorado and I had never heard of him. Apparently like, Jack compared himself to LeBron. <laughs> that is a, <laughs> Which I think that is, is a, so that is a, 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 a longstanding <laughs> joke now from like, Maybe pro champ. Well, maybe not. It's so funny. 2019 pro champs. Yeah, he was comparing him to his the legacy of LeBron and um, oh but let, uh, Jack was a Bomber Bird uh, player. Mm-hmm. Uh, led the team to semis more than once. I think. Um, Bravo captain in 2014 when Bravo won, um, and then he retired from Bravo and started playing Love Tractor after that. I st- I literally think he could today step on the field with Bravo and be um, the center handler. He's like he so would, good. Yeah, he would he would be one of the five best players on the team today. But my my question actually is, oh sorry, I, I'll let me keep tangenting. In an earlier episode, okay. we were asking about who like the best leaders we've ever played with are, and I had yeah. Quinn ask answer that and i had kins answer that but i actually never did and jack is is definitely my answer yeah i think he's the best leader that i've ever played with um like in terms of 
energy, his ability to rally and motivate, but also nobody works harder than him. Like he, I think he even puts Quinn to shame. He works super fucking hard all the time and he's diligent about logging everything. He's tracking yeah. everything. He's tracking his sleep. He's tracking his diet. He's tracking everything. That's cool. Um, That's real cool. He's a pro's pro for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But so Akane is, from what I've heard, Jack is retiring. Yeah. yeah. Mikey and- Bomb. <laughs> yeah, the Mikey Bob. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm yeah, devastated. Think, right? I'm like, what the fuck? What's the point, Jack? Like, if you had a you had a baby, you're having a second <laughs> child. Did you think about me? Like, <laughs> yeah, like seriously. What about Akane? You know, like, what the fuck? Like, what am I supposed it's to do? Like, no, it's definitely selfish of him. I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. The kids Thanks, are gonna kids. be around for. I'm like. <laughs> years years you can have a kid like next year i don't yeah. know like what about me <laughs> seriously and all of us fans of his, like it's gonna be a huge God, bummer to not watch him play anymore i cried about it <laughs> i hope he listens to this i cried <laughs> we'll about it, it. To him. <laughs> um but you had a year with them can you yeah, yeah. what what was oh, that man, like it was Did- great yeah, playing with Jack is so fun, especially because, like, the two of us are, like, the center handlers. And, yeah. Like, a lot of the season, we were we were struggling to, like, connect with the downfields. Not, like, yep. their fault or anyone's fault, but, like, we'd get stuck a lot. And so me and Jack would, like, really have to work together. It's so easy to play with because he just gets open. And if yeah. he wants me to do something different, he'll be like, do this different. And I'll be like, okay. Um, and, yeah, and then... One one like really key moment for me was before regionals. I was feeling really stressed out, so I was feeling a lot of pressure personally. And like, there's not we had two bids in our region and like five teams that could take them. Yeah, or six even. Yeah, I watched a lot of those games. And yeah, it was scary. And I lost I, like, the trash in on log, day one, right? Yeah, it was rough. Um, but I put in our like, workout log, like, I'm a little scared. And he, like, sent <laughs> yeah. me this really long text that was, like, like, hey, like, just want you to know, like, I think you're really good and you deserve to be here. And also, like, I have your back. And so, like, let's check in. And, like, God damn, that guy. It was, like, very – I was, what? like, oh, shit. Like, and I didn't even, like, need to change – I didn't need to do anything different. But just having that, yeah, you know, affirmation was, like, okay, totally. now I can – play confidently oh my god i'm like this. getting a little teary-eyed just thinking about it <laughs> that's really good emotional intelligence from a, yeah. From yeah. a leader yeah you're, you're that crying was, that was a big I, moment I, I feel like it i feel like i could <laughs> i I'm, i think i'm a little also just sad that jack is not going to be playing anymore yeah um mm. all right well i could i yeah. have some questions stored up yeah. i mean that was an, an emotional topic. Now that Mikey's crying, I guess I can. <laughs> Mikey, go get a tissue. I'll take the wheel for a little bit. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Kins. Okay, I have, I, I have a – first, I'll go into a, a past question for you, Akana, and then right. after that, we'll go into a future question. The past yeah. one is a is a personal one. Like Looking back at my career, I feel like I can – there were specific uh, – not necessarily like moments, but – like developmental periods where I worked on large, maybe like flaws or whatever, just like mm-hmm. big things changed about my game that helped me become a better player. And like, I would be curious to know, like throughout your development as an ultimate player, if any epiphanies stick out to you as, you know, mm-hmm. things that you realized, you know, and that helped you develop as a player, like maybe making a jump from like college to club or from mm-hmm. women's to mixed or like anything that could have anything that you, and honestly, this is hard. Like, I know that's a tough one. Right. It's hard Cause if we like, we don't like write them down necessarily, but I know that like I could think of a couple probably maybe if you gave me a couple seconds, like I could think of a couple that I've had and I would be curious to know yours. Mm, that's hard question um or has it just been a smooth steady definitely hasn't been well okay here's one is my freshman year at whitman i thought it was a shit 
and I wasn't and I kind of like I was playing a lot in like our early season tournaments and I was like oh I am the shit <laughs> and then we went to like Northwest Challenge and I didn't play like almost at all and I was like what like I was not expecting this I think I deserve to be playing um and it, it was like it sucked I was like what the fuck you know mm -hmm. I should be playing and then I don't remember like when it was but I had a teammate tell me like okay well look at all the people who are on the field right now like are you better than them and I was like oh shit like no I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these people are really good <laughs> and they're like yeah like if you want to win this game like we should have them on the field obviously they're not saying that you're bad but like like are you better than all the people on the field and I was like no I am gonna and then I like bought into like being a good sideline presence and like having food yeah. and like yeah. you know talking and it was like much more rewarding to be like mm. engaged that way than to be like complaining about playing time um which and is what that was a hard do? realization what do you mean what did I do what did you do to become as good as those players who were on the field that oh. eventually became you on the field I don't know. Like, I think has I there worked been really anything hard. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, has... b b before you even go into that, I I love that realization though because it's it's something that every team struggles with, and so many players yeah. do because there are people who play more on basically every team, and mm -hmm. it's important to f to realize that you can have an impact on the game and on the team, especially like the the dynamic of the team, the culture of the team, if you are you know, if you embrace that role, yeah. because it does have a significant impact, even if it doesn't feel like it all the time. It also like feels good to be like contributing. Yeah. Rather than like, not <laughs> so, just, like just, so. Uh, but it's, it is hard. It is hard for me to like say that to people now because I'm the one getting more playing time usually. And so if I'm like, Hey, like you just got to realize like, just give me some snacks and you'll feel like you're doing something <laughs> like, right. like doesn't you work. You can't say that. Yeah. Yeah. You need someone else, like someone, that person on the sideline to say it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's funny. It, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people can't handle that, but someone was talking about that on our pod. It's like, that's like a biggest, one of the biggest cancers to a team is like having people that feel feeling like they aren't contributing, you know, can't have mm -hmm. that. Everyone needs to feel like they're contributing one way or another whether it be on the field off the field yeah um and it's 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 as much the the uh team as a whole it's like the responsibility of the team to make sure people feel like they can like they are contributing in some way it's just mm -hmm. a difficult thing yeah and like outline a role for them or give give some yeah. structure to what people can be doing yeah and and another thing that i thought of while you were talking about that kind of is like it seems like Obviously, with, with sports and stuff, we always talk about the physical side of things and making sure you're in shape during mm -hmm. a season and you're healthy and all this stuff. But, like, even just that, it's, like, almost like an entire season or career is this trying to find a balance of a mental space that is healthy yeah. t for playing. Like, not too confident, not too unconfident yeah. in your abilities uh like all those types of things and like has such a big impact on how you perform like where you are mentally like are, do you For think sure. you're the best player do you think you're the worst player are you even thinking about those things because maybe that's maybe that's what you need maybe you just don't want to like Kenny, right. you said you don't want to be thinking about those things at all but that mental graph of just like trying it's to be so as flat hard. as possible instead of yeah. like up here down here you really want to mm -hmm. be as flat as possible that would be a good uh you know course to get yeah for someone to it's study it's so hard and i feel like people i've felt like this like throughout college and stuff but people are often throwing out like mental toughness and i'm like what the fuck does that even mean <laughs> like i don't right. know how to do that yeah and like i feel like i'm struggling and like what's mental toughness like and everyone's like just mental toughness and so <laughs> just mental toughness. there's no like way to practice or like and there are some good there are some good resources but it, it's something that needs to be trained um and exercised like right. anything else i feel like i do some now like individually like on my own but like 
it'd be nice if teams would, could like offer more of that as like a team. I know it's like individualized. It's like like a, hard to like, do something yeah. that works for everyone, but like, like a if mental I was a captain, strengthening exercise. What is it? Like, what would you think mental strengthening? Like, what is mental toughness? What someone who yeah. has someone who is mentally tough? What does that? Um, you know, for me, look like. it looks like someone whose emotional graph is flat. Like yeah, that's what I, I think. Because like, if something shitty happens and you feel really bad, like that's okay. But as long as you're able to like kind of get back to the middle and like focus on same what you can control. Like, yeah, and if you get like really high, like that's sometimes bad too because you get overconfident. Um, totally. No, I agree. Because if you think about a person who's physically tough, like if. I was trying to do something. Mm-hmm. If I was trying to do a bunch of pull-ups, but I had like some pain in my wrist, but still the ability to like do the pull-ups would be tough, I suppose. So like mm-hmm. mentally tough would having some like pain in your mind, you know, some yeah. sort of yeah. distraction, pain, well, annoyance in your Kings, mind and still I'll, having the ability. I'll ask you something because some of our practices – um, can be almost too forgiving, like not competitive enough. And we sometimes struggle to find the balance of giving you too much leeway to try things and, and versus like mm-hmm. actually having a consequence of failure. Do you, how have you felt about that at times? In terms of like building mental toughness? Like yeah. Like do you, do you just find yourself like, well, I don't really care if I make this mistake because I don't know. There are no, there's no consequence for it at practice. Mm, but like, what kind of, like, what kind of mistake? Like, like, um, I, it seems like you're thinking of like when we would have like a, mu- like, and we're trying to force yeah, yeah, yeah. people to work on like a huck or in a round and you are giving a mulligan for that. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel like it softens the team ever? Uh, I mean, that's was like my initial response to it was like, but I mean, I guess like I suppose like if you like only did that, it could have that effect on teams. I suppose like, but at the same time, you should be encouraging people to work on different stuff. So then, you know, that reinforces that. Yeah. But it's a hard it balance. is it it you it is a hard balance because there's the balance of you want people to get better at stuff, and and we've talked about this. Like you want people to get better at stuff, and there's those practices. But then there's also you want people to get better at doing what we're going to do in a tournament, which is playing a super competitive game. And you have to respond to throwing a turnover or messing up or doing something wrong. So I think, you know, just figuring out like what your team needs and then prioritizing those. And and, and so like maybe it's like earlier in the season, right? You're doing – and I think that makes a lot of sense. Like earlier in the season, you're doing a lot more like – less intense maybe competitive stuff where you're encouraging people to try new stuff and they're like kind of branching out of their comfort um, zone and later in the season you're just playing a game yeah it's so you so yeah, basically you, you had to ramp up um yeah maybe I, I mean i don't know but maybe that seems like one approach to it that could there, work. there was one year uh from mom bird west chow when he was a captain had us read a book he, he he actually bought the book for everybody on the team it was called the mind gym um oh, i haven't oh do you I have it right like, here right there. <laughs> oh wow it's right here have you read it yet i've been i'm perusing no like half of it no i so oh, okay. here's my That's take on a lot that. of these things um um i think they're good resources for sure I think we also might have had that was in our stretch of our two worst seasons, so maybe it wasn't that effective. Yeah. Although, you know, our talent don't read level, the book, you know, uh, It the, feels kind of basic, right? That's the thing, right? Because he would have us do these mental exercises. Like, I feel like you can read half the book and get the get the premise. You know, there was the classic example of of a book that a lot of athletes like to read is the inner game of tennis. Um, mm-hmm. it's a, that's a really quick one. You can probably read it in like a couple hours. I could be wrong. It's, it's maybe like a hundred pages though. Um, uh, but there are a lot of good resources. I think Tina Booth has said this before other coaches, uh, this isn't exactly like mental toughness, but, um, more centered around focus and how like it's, 
what you were talking about, Akana, like trying to be like have that even uh, keelness. Um, like the example she talks about is with focus. Like it's it's okay if you lose focus. Um, what you need to work on is realizing when you've lost focus and then locking back in. Um, it's just like meditation. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's actually the the exercise. She has an what is a I don't remember what her book was called. I have it somewhere. A lot of it's super outdated at this point. Um, but it's like a simple counting exercise where you focus on a number. Um, like you're basically you're counting, but you focus on the number one and you keep saying like one in your mind until you get distracted and and um your mind wanders off. And then the goal is to catch yourself and um come back and start counting again. So if you realize that you became distracted, then you start uh, you, you start, you move up to the number two and then you keep thinking about the number two. I could be getting this wrong, but that's essentially the exercise. And I imagine you would probably do it for like a time and, um, you do it for 10 minutes and maybe the first day you do it, you get all the way up to 20 or something. I don't know. Um, but the, the goal is to eventually, you know, if you could go 10 minutes and only think about the number one, that would be pretty impressive, yeah. even for somebody who's very well trained at it, at it i imagine and i guess like mental toughness mental toughness would allow you to maintain mm-hmm. focus potentially. yeah yeah and i think a lot of if you want to be mentally tough you have to put yourself in challenging situations like yeah. repeatedly and it cannot just be with sports and frisbee and um you know like even or working out too but i think you have to stretch yourself uh, with what you're learning. Um, I, Kins knows this. I like a lot of, I, I really like, um, the stoic philosophy. I really like Taoism, Buddhism. Cool. Like I am not an expert in any of these things, but I like to listen. And, um, there are just, there are resources around those, uh, philosophies. And basically they all say that this more or less the same thing, like worry about what you can control. Um, and, you know, put yourself in challenging situations so you get used to it. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm. Yeah. And remember, like, Mikey, when in the finals, when I went up to you and I was like, Mikey, I'm so zen right now. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly how I was feeling. Like, I do. Nothing, yeah. That's like nothing could seared hold into my, my brain. Bit. Yeah. Oh, it was seared into my brain. Like, nothing could distract me. I was so in the moment. It was so cool. It was, it was a really, yes, it was like the a best was, feeling. Yeah. Oh my God. It was like a med. It was, it was, it was clarity. It was, I guess so you could describe it as just like, even yeah. though, yeah, it was like, but yeah. that, that's, that's what it was, but it's, I get nervous now because that was the last big game of ultimate I played. And like, like I want to be able to, it? yeah, I want to be know. able to tap into that and like practice mm. games and stuff. But like, I don't know, like, I mean, I've played so many, I don't think I was anywhere near like that level of focus and not getting distracted. So I, I want to be Zen. That flow state. That maybe maybe it's not Chillkins. Maybe it is Zenkins. Mm, Zenkins. Chill. Maybe that's yeah, really like, what. I, maybe that's. I what did I should like be some on. exercise when I was practice play with Molly Brown, and they're like, "Here's how you find your flow state. Like you just have to get into it, and then like observe yourself." But it's like, how do I fucking get there in the first place? <laughs> um, that's I remember that. I don't know if that was exactly what they were trying to say, but I remember being like. Well, if I never feel good, like yeah. how am I supposed to know like how like, to get that there? That sounds sick. But... <laughs> like, yeah, that would be awesome. But like, I'm not gonna like pull out a notebook. I guess I could, but like that's so hard to like recognize that you're in it too. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you I don't recognize. realize until after. You know what was funny? You know what? <laughs> Something that helped was like I think I was just saying like kind of like this is connecting to what you were talking about with tina's exercise mikey like i'm i was singing the same part of a song <laughs> and saying that we were down three the entire game and that's all so like so like if anything happened that usually would annoy me like i would just go back to singing pepas or saying that we were down three like after we scored so like it's like anything awesome. that would distract me i'll just like tap back into like and uh, you know like it was wow yeah. that's a good exercise that's so maybe tool. that's what i should do so maybe i should just like yeah. have a catchy part of a song and just like it's like your mantra that. 
because then you're not thinking about anything else just just that reminds me this is a tangent but i was coaching at cut camp one year and this kid started singing what was he singing the like pina colada song i think (laughs) and he was yeah i think it was that song it might have been a different one but it was like along the same like the same vibes and he like they were playing mini or something and the other team was like trying really hard and he was just like giving and going all the way down the field while singing like continually to sing the song and he got like every other and he like scored because like no one could keep up with him and i was like wow that's impressive like (laughs) i'm I'm gonna start doing that (laughs) that's awesome yeah and all the other kids are like oh like i'm trying so hard to like stop him but that's their problem (laughs) that's their problem because actually i was thinking about this out of the beach yeah i was was thinking about this uh playing uh watching a disc golf tournament and thinking about like sometimes it feels like when you're in the lead at a disc golf tournament it can make Mm -hmm. the people play really well uh and the people chasing them are not playing as well and disc golf Mm -hmm. is like incredibly mental and i think sometimes it's like when you're in the lead and you're not worrying about whoever's behind you like all you're worrying about when you're in that zone is just like throwing Mm -hmm. your next shot and like what your shot is going to be and whatever whereas like when you're someone chasing someone in front of you and this is kind of like what you were just talking about like you're thinking about that and you can't Mm -hmm. be thinking about that because all you can be thinking about is what shot you're gonna throw and whatever like what how you're gonna play defense and so it's like that part of the mental game is uh it's like but it can happen i guess it can happen on both sides because some people can be in front and you know yeah and they get in their head and they get in their head about worrying about and so it's just like that ability to yeah like no matter what situation you're in just being focusing on you know the point the 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 shot that you're throwing i love disc golf (laughs) but um yeah okay i have now my future question for you you ready connor yeah okay where do you see ultimate in five to ten years you can take this in different directions you can yeah. Take it in terms of popularity. You can take it in terms of club versus pro, which I think seems to be the most mm-hmm. interesting way mm-hmm. to take it. Stop directing. Where do you see... Let her. It gets directed there anyway. Like okay. it's the most prevalent yeah. thing. It's like where what's gonna what's gonna happen? Club or pro? And like what's ultimate gonna look like? And how's it gonna be played? And where is it gonna be played? And what are the rules gonna be? Okay, go. Sure. Okay. This is really hard question for me because i like just kind of play and i'm like not thinking about it but no you also coach obviously i also coach yes so but get also, over it. she's in the moment okay. though with <laughs> with pro versus club it's like that's like the obvious one right as you said um because pro is like so new and like becoming such a big thing i still think that like there's there's still like demand for club and for like recreational frisbee i think that a lot of people think that's really important is like the grassroots like anyone can learn to play anyone can play pick up at league um join a club team make your own club team i think that that is a really important part of the sport for a lot of people and just like for the existence of frisbee so i think it's still gonna remain I I do agree with, I think it was like Quinn's take maybe last time that like pro is going to be the mainstream like option for consumption and like kids and like people who don't know anything about ultimate are going to go to the pro to learn about it and to like get into it, Um, which I have some like mixed feelings about. I don't know. I feel like. I, uh, I, well, I went to a summit game last year and all these little kids were like, this is so cool. Like I know about Frisbee and yeah. it was a game against like Oakland or something. It was just such a horrible, it was at Oakland, the spiders. Is that where they're from? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were so bad. <laughs> and I was like, this is not good. Like these kids, like, this is not good. Like, let me tell you, like I should be out there. There's, a, <laughs> like, there's like an even better <laughs> yeah option yeah um so it was interesting but i think but it's also exciting to like get to play for a crowd and like get like yeah people coming out to games like that's like really cool 
and you can't just like watch club like who wants to do that you know and there's right. only a few teams you'd want to watch anyway like it kind so, of doesn't matter how the kids get into the sport as long as they get into the sport right like they don't know what yeah. they're watching but at least it's available to them and it makes them excited about it right but I does it matter it is important that there's like equity and like visibility for like uh-huh. a variety of different kinds of people right like if all we had was the adl i would be pretty pissed about it <laughs> yeah like, and i was or initially like this is this all that we get to see that all that little kids get to see is like jimmy Miffle doing his thing you know or like now that we have the wl and the pul it's like more exciting more there's like a little bit more equity um and so that's cool hopefully we get some kids and like just community people coming out to our games and getting excited about yeah we'll be out there april 8th watching uh the home opener can't wait for that also mikey what you were saying like does it matter if it's what the kids are watching if it's kind of a different version of ultimate than we're used to like if, if what the kids are if all the kids are watching refs on a huge field stall seven like does that matter in how you see ultimate shaking out yeah. um, in the future uh, i i don't think it, i i think it's fine i i understand why people would think it matters i personally don't because i i, I think that people the assumption is if this is the, the version of the sport they see then it's the only one that they will ever want to be a part of i in fact don't even think you know, as an Asian person, I don't look at a bunch of white people and say, Oh, I can't do that. Cause they're all white. Um, that's my, mm. my personal feelings around anything. Uh, I know that's not true for a lot of other people. Um, I think that, you know, like other sports are also confusing and there's like a, def- a lot of other avenues. Like my favorite thing right now is pickleball. Um, uh, there's, you're there's, the problem. There's the, there's like the, the professional, I I'm going to butcher this. There's like, there's like two professional associations and now there's major league pickleball, major league pickleball is like mixed gender too. It's, I haven't cool. watched much of it, but, uh, but you'll see like the best female player. Her name's Anna Lee waters playing against some, uh, wait, how old is like, she? She's only 16 years old. Yeah, and she's making oh, like six figures. Yeah, yeah. That pisses me off. It, it's not for her. Like I'm super happy that for we're her not doing it right, right, as a like, person. Yeah. But the fact that someone is making six figures at 16 playing pickleball pisses me off. <laughs> and all that, and it makes that, and then all the it makes me jealous. And like that, and then all the disc golfers who make hella money. It's like, all yeah, right, cool. My my point though is. What are we doing? Uh, uh, yeah, what are we doing? But my point what is, what are we doing? When I see that, like, I don't, I, I watch Annie Waters, and like, I want to go play pickleball now. Like, I don't care about like what the format is. Like, I just want to go hit the ball, and like, I want to play with my friends. Um, maybe it's that's unique to me because a lot of people argue that like, if I don't see someone who looks like me playing this sport, then I don't think it's accessible to me. I, 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 I don't know. I just don't think that way. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is not quite the same, but I think it's interesting, like the AUDL, I have kids who like watch the AUDL, obviously, and I've seen a lot of it, and they show up to practice and they're like throwing blades and shit, and I'm like, or we can just swing it, you know? Oh, yeah. Maybe, Don't blame the AUDL for blades. No, I'm not blaming the is, ADL for blades. They show you up throw a like, pretty I, crazy <laughs> flick blade. I Kane. do. I love a flick blade, because I'm not going to... I'm not blaming the ADL, but I'm saying these kids show up and they like have all these ideas for like different kinds of like crazy throws or like they see something on TikTok and they want me to teach them. And I'm like, well, we can just, you can just like throw and catch better too. Yeah. Maybe I'm a little old school, but. Yeah. Maybe you are a little old school. <laughs> yeah, maybe you need to let these be. kids be free. But, like, I think it'd be crazy if we were just like a blades only team, but. Well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put up, pull up, pull out some more clips of that high release IO backhand. It's not quite high release that you have. And <gasps> that's the one they should be learning. It's too easy. I know. It's just, um, like kind of, uh, I saw those, that, the highlight reel. Oh, I was like, yeah. wow, only through inside backhands that whole game. Yeah, it was. It you was had one other backhands. forehand that I actually, I clipped out 
I don't remember why. I think it, it just didn't flow as well or something. I was doing yeah, it on my it, it I was doing one of these is not like the other. Yeah, yeah. Akane only throws flicks in mini. That's confirmed. I throw, yeah, I throw a good flick blade to Kim's in mini. Nice. Great. Unstoppable. Yeah. Like if it yeah, was like two v two, like it'd be pretty crazy. Yeah. But um, that going back to just really fast that question you were like who pumps you up the most I think it might be Kings <laughs> in mini. <Let's laughs> that go. One, we had like one summer where we were playing mini a lot and I didn't know you very well, but I was like wow this is so fun I feel like I'm playing great mini right now because I get to play with kids. And you and would people like, are like a little mini. pissed off, you know? Yeah, it's like mini, and people would like show up, and then you would like sky and like stare them down and be like, if you're not here to try, then leave. And I was like, <laughs> oh, let's show respect. Like, we're here to work. Not everybody <laughs> responds to Kins that way, but I'm glad to hear you had a positive <laughs> impact on you. I thought it was dumb. <laughs> Most people respond if yeah, they try no, harder. We, no, not even if it's not like in a positive way. Like I don't oh, think I Brew, like I don't think Brew responds to it in a positive way, but it does make mm. him try really hard against me, which I <laughs> love. Like I, I think it pisses Brew off a lot, but like Brew gets going when I like am being myself because he wants to. You know, it's annoying. I'm an annoying. It's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So if you were gonna, if you had to pick, Akane, like. Mm-hmm. What do you like? Like, do you like the professional style of ultimate more? Or if you were picking, like, in, in, in your ideal, I think it might be too early. In your okay, fair. In your mm-hmm. ideal world of high level ultimate, knowing what you know about professional and club, and so you know you could like mix and match things that you like from both. Mm-hmm. Like, what would it look like? Like, from like on field play style, like a season, you know, those types of things, like in terms of like money, those kinds of things, like what would it look like? Yeah. I think, well, in terms of like the game, I like the shorter stall because I think it forces you to do shit. You can't just like stand there and wait for something to happen and then be like, "Mm, maybe not, you know, you have to like, (laughs) if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Right. Um, uh, So I like it a little faster. I, um what else i feel do you like, like tournaments or do you like games i tournaments kind of suck yeah, I but it, like makes sense from like a economical standpoint financial time, yeah time yeah that's like the only thing if we could play more just like single games i would love that at the same time i feel like really weird about like flying to for be game. somewhere for less than 24 hours yeah that feels like not great to me either but it is nice to just play one game and get just get to focus on one game maybe like finals of club Um, and stuff should be 21 or 17 (laughs) because you know you're only playing one game is it oh because it's one day it's one day day. like it's one day yes you've played an entire tournament leading up to that but like It'd be kind of cool if it was a longer game, like more could happen Mm -hmm. or, you know, teams would just get blown out by more. So I I also think speaking of points, like I think that pro, like it'd be cool to play kind of more of a pro like pace and like style, but like to point cap. At the time thing for me, I don't really, well, I only played one game, but we would just like stop and I'd be like, what's going on? You know? Um, and then it would just be over. Whereas if, I think if you're playing to a point, it's, I guess they're both motivating in different ways. It did work. Running out of time, you have to score really fast. But like, if, if I'm, if we're behind by a couple, like I know exactly, like we have to break a few times to win. It's like very clear. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I haven't played enough to like really know. And I feel like, like our whole team is so new that there's not any like systems or like understanding in place that I can like buy into. We're all the Alpen glow has no systems. Well, we have yes. systems, but like in terms of like, <laughs> I don't even know what, in terms of what, well, like, no, I get it. like it's, the, yeah, it's your first year. Uh, like specific, the summit we're going through yeah. too. Like we like, th- like calling timeouts, like almost tore the summit apart last year. Yeah. Like we didn't like, <laughs> we like, like literally we almost had to do, like, 
disband as a team because timeouts were yeah. tearing us apart. It was like, it was like, you know, very intense. You know? <laughs> and like our coaches are new too. Like they're doing a good job, but you can see that they're like stressed out in the games. Like, Oh shit. Like, With the new format. We gotta yeah. do this. There's no time. Like, oh, like yeah. Was hurt. We have to get more people in. Like the what do you think about timeouts, Akana? How do you think they should be used? I like subbing on timeouts. I think that's great. So you can Wait, sub in. Do you, but but you play offense, right? I well, I'm not sure anymore. I, oh, I think no. of myself as an O line player. Uh, Maybe you need to be confident re- in being an yeah. O line player. So uh, I played a lot of defense in my last game. Did you? Oh, I so you could like, maybe yeah, redefine. Played a lot with redefine Pesh, and you yeah. play a lot with jess right and yeah that's like the o line i was typing me on the swing line last oh. time which was like what um and i also played a lot of d points like with the d line which was new interesting yeah um so but how do you think timeouts should be used in terms of like if the defense gets the disc should you call timeout and- should you call timeout or should you call timeout like if you're getting broken a bunch Hmm. Hmm. when should you use your timeouts i like i mean i don't know i like definitely like calling timeouts when the defense gets a block um especially if it like if the d-line has been out there for a while or yeah if they're struggling to generate offense I'll check or, back in on you in that when uh, yeah. you uh, after you've played a couple D points and then they call it, they sub you out when yeah. you get the disc. I mean I've never that's never happened to should you, we, right? Should we give and, our like, takes? I know that it happens. Um, yeah, give your takes. What do you take? So uh, originally, like our the policy, what? Well, not the policy, but the strategy, the thinking was at the beginning of the season, like yeah, let's get our own line out there. That makes sense. Um, we we did we moved away from different pieces of it. Like we, we stopped generally stopped calling timeouts from the sideline. Are you able to do that? Like, are the coaches allowed to call a timeout? They called all of the timeouts. I have no idea what was going on. Like we just stopped (laughs) and I was like, what? Like, (laughs) so in the AUDL, it can either be, um, on field or a designated captain or coach, um, on the sideline. And, we eventually gave the power to the people on the field, um, partly because that of what sense. Kins was describing. Um, and like, it doesn't we, make sense, Akane. No, well, there are pieces of it that, that it makes do, sense though. For like, people on the, field. The, the, the pros of this are like, if they are generating offense, then you might as well let them wear the O line down because the O line cannot call a timeout. So you might as well put that fatigue on, on them. Um, if they're not generating offense, I would like to take some of that power back and have like either TK or I call a timeout in that instance. Power hungry. The cons is that no one ever calls a timeout if you give it to the people that are yeah. going to get subbed off to call Spicer a timeout. Will. Spi- but Spicer will also probably stay on. We'll probably put that our our, our swing line on. Um, at, we called What did we call it? No, the Atlas was Bravo. I, f- I kind of forget what our swing line name was. I don't know for. if we had one. Maybe we did. We did. We had uh, we had two D lines. Uh, sorry, Akani, for this. Uh, an O line, and then uh, our hybrid line, which I'm forgetting the name of. There you go, apologizing for what again? Akani is my guest. Make, we've covered that pre-show that Akani is the guest, but I feel like I don't like you. Know, you're like the person that is like, okay, I don't want to sound confident here i don't want to sound cocky but i think i'm the best player on the field at all no times. that's different that's different is that different? That's different yeah this is me making sure that our guest is uh not I bored out of her mind <laughs> well i think it is kind of boring you trying to figure out what our specific swing line was called like pretty irrelevant <laughs> Maybe you should. Well, check so with I me, should apologize. Is what you're saying? Well. You're telling me I should apologize. <laughs> but I don't think you need to apologize for that. I think you should just have the wherewithal to be like, you know what? <laughs> Moving on. No, I can always edit it out. I'll. That's no. So uh, um, no editing. All right. What's what? What was? What, what did I? What did I interrupt everybody about though? We were talking. No, nothing. About, we were just talking timeouts? about timeouts. timeouts. You better start thinking about that, Akane. It's I big, still, and I it'll tear you. Like, it'll tear your team apart. Or maybe you shouldn't because you're a player. From the- 
from the sideline is like still important though because like we had a few points in our first game that were like so long and the defense kept getting blocked and they kept turning it over yeah like pretty quickly and it's like we just call a timeout get those people that get new lines out. on the field totally. like why are we doing this and then they get scored on and it sucks <laughs> and they're gassed for the rest of the game yeah i guess um, like what you're weighing could have broken like, right like what you're weighing is like the ability to score more efficiently which is good but also the fact that when your d line is out there you're really tiring out the other team's yeah, o line true. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you call timeout, you're going to tire out your O line. I so, think our problem is that our team, it became clear that we were not very well conditioned. <laughs> and so at this point, we would, I personally think that we should rather be scoring more efficiently. Whereas, like with Quandry, we were fine throwing turnovers and like fine just like working because we knew that we would tire out the other team. Yeah. So Gritty. Get the block anyway. Yeah. You had the grit. Um, uh, there are other factors though with the whole timeout thing you know there's personnel there right. is the um really that that galvanizing mental thing of if your d-line does score the break also like our statistics for when we brought the o-line in were really bad we would have a lot we had a lot of first throw turnovers and, nut. <laughs> yeah and you, it was usually nut um <laughs> Because in those instances, like he would, he, I, I, he's like his mental changed a little bit and he would shoot for the end zone right away. Um, so there, mm. like the, the, the numbers did not make sense to just keep calling timeouts. It's a tough one, tough one to figure out. We need more data. I feel like you'd have to practice it or like implement it somehow before, perhaps. Yeah. I, I wonder what other teams do. Well, most teams. I wonder how much other teams have thought about it. A lot of teams do the instant, like Chicago, instant boom. timeout. Get the O-line boom. Out there. Boom. Hmm. Yeah. Which is also. If you have a fast break, though, why bother? Just. Yeah, we're trying to fast break a lot on Alpine Globe because the assumption is that we're we're at altitude and other teams will be tired. Ah, uh, mm. Utah also at altitude, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, did I mean, you know? I think fast breaking is always great. Did you yes. know what the word the Elpenglow best. meant before you played on the team? I mean, I think like big, like I never really like, used it. But I, 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 I had never heard the word was. until <laughs> it was on the team name. It's survey. one, it's one word. It is yeah. one word. It's, yeah. It's like, oh, I the, thought it was like, like the Alpines glowing. I mean, kind of is. It's like the sunset or the sunrise, like when it turns the mountains like pink. Yeah. Oh, the, I like that. When the Alpines it's, are it glowing. It is cool. <laughs> okay, so I kind of put two and two together there. <laughs> nice. Um, we have some fan questions for you here. And, and oh my god, I'm so are excited. We, are we ready for those, or Kins? Should we keep? Should we keep? No, chatting? I, I think I think we're ready for fan questions. Maybe maybe right. specific advice for youth players slash what you think most important things for youth players. Specific are to advice learn. for youth players. Yeah, I think just like throwing a lot. And throwing like a lot of different kinds of throws, like trying different things with like with your edges and with your like step outs and with your release points. Like I think that that is like a huge, huge, huge tool for to learn. learning how to break a mark and like learning how the disc works, right? Like I can throw a blade, but if I throw it a little bit different angle, it's going to plot it's going to go way different right yeah but i know how what angle most of the time i can throw a blade because i've done it and what's bad and like which will float more and which will like slice more um and like how much spin you put on it to fly exactly out, yeah. yeah um i think throwing it's it's like you can't throw too much you know no um but yeah also i don't know what it's hard i really want uh, what I want is to be able to teach youth players how to see space better, and I'm I'm not, I'm not sure how yet. Is it like watching film? Is it like just yeah? What? How do you feel like it field? manifests? Like, do you, what? What are they struggling? Well, sometimes with? people are like cutting, and they'll cut right behind the mark, and it's like, well, 
like maybe a try to when they could just be attacking the open space or like yeah the break oh, so you're space, talking about right? even like as a downfield player yeah or as a thrower like i see which spaces are available for me to throw into and yeah. like where people should cut or like depending on your defender like if your defender is here that means that you're you have space over there theoretically so i don't have a um specific answer for this but it is something that i think we try to work on and i could definitely give you some stuff oh that'd be great offline here um but like the quick recap is pattern everything honestly and there 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 are more things that you can that you need to teach than i realized um through the throughout the years and i still struggle with this especially like going into a new season because I have all this huge group who knows basically everything. So I, mm-hmm. I start at this middle point when I need to be starting at the beginning. Kins tells me that some good feedback that he has for me is I overcomplicate things too. Like I, I, I give all the scenarios right away when like mm-hmm. I, I need to remember like that there's a, a base level here that we need to master before moving on to things. Um, I think nut does something really well, like with, especially what you're talking about, like seeing the mark and, and like we have downfield cutting progressions and some reset mm-hmm. progressions. And, um, he'll talk about like, if the mark is playing, you playing this way, attack this space at this angle. And this is why, and generally it's, you know, right. Because it's easier for the thrower. It's an easier throw to complete. Right. Yeah, that's like one thing, like they're cutting really hard and they're like, you know, they've lost their defender, but they are just going to this like horrible space in the field. And I'm like, the thrower can't get it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Go find a space where you can get it. Like, it's not just one. Do you Um, have anything that you would advise youth players for? Like, so those are good skill, like... What what are things to think about like as they be, go from youth to the to the next levels? Like is hmm. from like a maybe a mindset standpoint? Anything come to mind? That's interesting too. Um Yeah, I mean I feel like if you just like commit to like working hard no matter what the scenario, that's like gonna pay off eventually right like even if you're not going to get the playing time your first your freshman year if you like demonstrate that you're bought in and you're working really hard then like people are Mm going to see that and you might like start like earning yourself more playing time immediately but you also might just like get better (laughs) and yeah yeah. learn more yeah um yeah i don't know i think like you you get out of you'll get out what you put in, right? So if you like buy into the team, then you'll feel, you'll feel like part of the team and you won't feel like shit. If you are like, I'm not going to play, I'm not going to get playing time anyway, so I'm not going to try very hard, then you're going to feel like shit. So that's, that's kind of what I think. I know it's like, like freshman year always sucks because you don't know what's going on and like you probably don't get to play very much and like it's also your freshman in college and you're like, what's You're what's figuring stuff life? out. Yeah. 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 So that transition is hard, but if you just like work hard, if you like want to get better for the just work hard, then you will probably get at least a little bit. Yeah. Which, uh, is always a good thing. Yeah. At least you're getting better. You know what I just thought of while you were saying that, and I want to copyright it right now. Maybe we can write a book called the cost of buying in. Ooh. Oh shit. That's a great title. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it exists. I just quick Googled it and nothing is there. I I, I looked up the cost of buying in and it's complete costs of buying a home. How much money do you need to buy a house? <laughs> like, can we copyright that? Because one, it's a great name. The cost of buying in. Title? What do you mean? What does it mean? What do you have to give up to buy into a team? Like my mind oh, immediately okay. goes to like, what individually do you have to let go of? sacrifice pay Mm -hmm. in terms to buy into a team 
I'm gonna write a book on that. Can we copyright that? Can we? How do how do I copyright a saying? You should so, like write an essay and then it, publish it like really fast and then write yeah. a book on it later so that you already. How have do I copyright a free the world? The cost of buying in <laughs> does that not imply that like what what is the title? Does it tell you that it, there's an eventual positive outcome? No, you're just saying what's the cost of buying in? But what? Why should I buy in? Why? How does that title yeah, convince me to buy in? Yeah, you're just telling. But me if it. you are thinking like that, then don't read the fucking book. Because <laughs> if you don't want to buy in, then you're not bought in. Then then get the fuck in? out of here. <laughs> you're not. You're not bought in. I don't you're, think this is helping me. <laughs> right. So then, just fuck off. But <laughs> oh, okay. I was just most thinking. people who want to get better, they're gonna be like, "What is the cost of buying in? I want to buy in." How about what like- is the cost? What if it? What if it? Well, that should be like the subtitle. No. That should be the subtitle. No. Like, like it does kind of like sound team like you're success not out of it. colon <laughs> the cost of buying in. Why? You should write, make this little handbook, and hand it out to every player yeah. on every team you play for. But don't people assume like a positive connotation with buying in? Pro- that's, that's fair. Probably. Right. I'm just saying like, that the title. The title did not bring me to a positive <laughs> place. Wait, why not? Because it sounds you're like I'm emphasizing the cost. Yeah, like I'm paying something. I'm giving something up, and I don't know if I'm being. I'm just. Bu- I'm buying into. Am I buying into? It could be like fascism. Buying I don't know. Like <laughs> buying in. What's the cost? Oh yeah, that'd be really funny. Like, what if it was like the cost of buying in, but it was like my cult. <laughs> And like the whole book was like slowly brainwashing you into yeah, my like cult, that's what it sounds where I like. take advantage of you and you pay me hundreds of dollars a year to be a part of this organization. I don't know. Anyway, All right, fan questions. <laughs> All right, what Are we is ready? the cost? Um, yeah, what's the next? All right, I, I've got a, a I pulled a, a just a handful of them, and I'm gonna. I think we've kind of touched on some of them already, so we can either gloss sure. over them or or just skip them entirely. And I I will give the 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 askers a little shout out here. So, great. Um, quest question number one uh, from uh, Prasanna Akella. I'm sorry, I, I cannot read this cool. handle. Um, it says any advice how mixed teams can foster growth of women players? I don't know how to answer that question. (laughs) Akane, figure it out. Foster. Well, I think it's really hard because at least in my experience, um, the one mixed team I've played for, like some female matching players are there like for a very specific reason like i was brought in like specifically to be a female matching hammer on the o-line to handle with jack Mm -hmm. and it i felt very supported and i knew that i had a clear role and i knew that i was like important kind of and i think other players just kind of come on to their offered a spot and they don't really know like what their role is yeah so i think if like I think clarifying people's roles or at least like telling them that they might be in like a bit of a, like a hybrid role is helpful on any team, especially in mixed. Um, but I don't know. I feel like mixed, it, that's one of the things I find really hard about mixed is like how to utilize the different gender matching players yeah. effectively. And that's something that Jack was really good at. Like we should be giving the disc to uh, female matching cutters downfield so that they can huck it to male matching players. Um, and and that, like he like showed us, proved to us that it like opened up the field and it worked really well. And I was like, yeah. I don't really understand why totally yet. My, my two thoughts those ways. on mixed strategy, I think. Gen- well, this is not in depth, but the first one is if you're playing with Jack, I think you two should run as many give goes as possible um, within reason because Mm -hmm. you can't switch it. And um, that's, it's, it makes it incredibly difficult to guard. I I brought this up before and somebody told me that, you know, the world games teams were switching cross gender. I just don't think it's something that you can easily execute. And 
if you have two really strong players like you and Jack, it makes a lot of sense to facilitate uh, other mm-hmm. movement through the two of you. Just like um, some of the games that I watched, it would be you and Jack swinging back and forth until something opened up. In yeah. my mind, it would be more of like attack from the backfield with either one of you. So they can't switch yeah. it and put you in a better position to connect with the downfield. Um, yeah. We also talked about like, like really basic strategy, like putting all the male matching players like in the front of the stack and then female matching players so the in the back of the stack isolated so that they, yeah, they can't like poach in the deep yeah. space. Doesn't it, for the same reason, doesn't it almost make more sense for the, the male matching players to huck to the female matching players. Cause if a male's hucking, then you have one yeah, less male defender in the deep space. Yeah, I think that's true too. Um, yeah. So maybe Jack got that one wrong. I don't know. I don't know. He did it. He something about it worked when he explained it. <laughs> I was like, cool. Jack, I was Jack can convince me like... of anything. <laughs> Jack can convince me to walk off the end of a bridge for sure. Yeah. He's persuasive. Pushover. <laughs> yeah. Well, also I'm a pushover. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a hard question. I'm not sure I know how to answer it. That's well, all right. That's all right. Um, Kins, do you want me to read all these, or do you want to do the next one? Ah, go for it. Just, just <clears throat> pump them. All right. From at out. Joe Smash Twenty One, we already kind of oh answered this one, but it's uh, Hi, Smash. <laughs> Shout out Smash. Uh, what's it like playing Glow versus Club? And we did talk about this a lot. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to add. I think just playing women's is fun too. Like a lot of women, female matching players that I haven't met before even or played with before. And so it's cool to, yeah, just kind of broaden the community a little bit and like know that we have, like we're selling tickets and we have like, uh, like more of a media presence. Like that's, yeah, that's a difference too, that like we're supposed to be like, um like ambassadors or like role right. models that's like part of the job description um that's one difference yeah uh, what do you do do you like that um i don't like mind pressure? it pressure it's fun it's not really pressure what if you I don't spike think... what if you're edge spiking like do you... i'm going to edge spike it i don't give a fuck <laughs> and you don't like question um, that at all like if it's ethical like for as a as an ambassador and a role model like if you should be edge spiking no no. Because I'm a coach and I dedicate a lot of time to coaching these kids and I tell them and I explain to them what I think about spiking and edge spiking and when it's appropriate to do so. Yeah. Mm. And when is it appropriate to do so? Um, I mean, if it's like a big point and you're really excited, like it's often appropriate. And youth, it's a much touchier subject. People will get really mad at us. If, when someone tackles if, if you, they do. you turn around, you face <laughs> them and you spike it directly on their back. <laughs> Yeah, I would, yes, if someone does something fucked up, I would spike it near them or on them. Uh, if you're, like, beating a team by a lot, maybe just chill out a little bit. Like, we can be confident. You can also have fun celebrations. I, t- I try to tell my kids to, like, have fun yeah. celebrations. Yeah, fun is fun. Instead of, like, spiking just have people. Fun. Because, I've... also, because it's harder to, like, get mad about that if you're having fun. And right. if someone gets mm-hmm. mad that you're, like, having a good time, then, like... They can go fuck themselves. Yeah, exactly. But there's some people that look like they're just trying too hard to have fun. Like, it doesn't look very genuine. It's fair. You know? It's like yeah, they're trying to be reason. too cute. And that does yeah. make me mad. Because I do watch that a lot. I'm like, why am I so mad? Like, why do I look so mad <laughs> in that? Like, I'm having fun. Everything looks good. Like, why am I mad? It's like a very, I don't Are know. Are you mad? I don't think so. I, maybe I'm just trying to be tough. I don't know what it is. <laughs> There's a lot like like the really funny one, like when I double kick spiked it and like I walk off and I look mad and I'm like, I don't think I was. I That's think I'm funny. like, I that feel time like when you uh, was it a was it a uh, slow freshman? that you, you Yeah, were... that's the double kick. spike. Oh, that's the double one. <laughs> double kick. The double Classic. kick of glory. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a good one. Um, OK, next. Uh, Tyler. Fun Shawnee. over mad. Tyler. Oh, yeah. Shawnee. Okay, 55. Tyler. You know, Tyler. You know Tyler um, asks best teammate during college. Best teammate during college. I'm th- I'm assuming undergrad because he went to Whitman. Probably. Let Let's so go with Whitman. Whitman. We'll go with Whitman. Let's then. go with Whitman. Best teammate. Um. 
had a lot of good teammates. I think one that comes to mind is Nina Finley. Um, Nina plays for Exist right now. Um, and she, I'm pretty sure she, she, she heard from us. Um, but she was a senior when I was a freshman and like worked really hard and like played really hard, but was it somehow always just like really having a good time, just like chilling um, and just like toasting people. Um, she was a great teammate, very supportive and, but also like a really good like role model for like working really hard and like playing really hard and being competitive. Um, she's, yeah, she's one big one that comes to mind. Shout out Nina. Um, yeah, shout out Nina. I also played with the Sues, Alyssa and Linnea Sue. They play for BFG now. They're also great. Um, yeah. Nice. I had a lot of good leaders to look Got up to in my first teammates. couple of years. Yeah. Um, do you want to do quandary or? Um, yeah, I can do quandary. What was it? Best teammates? Yeah. Um, I think Britta and like Emma Capra were like really good teammates and like they were in their like seventh years or whatever. So they were <laughs> kind of like these like mom figures, yeah. but very good at like fostering like positive and like fun vibes on the team and like giving little like nuggets of wisdom and like insight yeah um so they were like re- they work really hard and like emma especially and Britta too they're both like very competitive but they like know that we're here like in college and we're like trying to like have a good time and like create a safe and like fun environment yeah so that was yeah. yeah i think they're big ones yeah I, I definitely know that about Britta. she's very much that way yeah um okay two more we're gonna start with one okay. that I, I think you are probably you probably know this person pretty well uh jay klein cop yeah is that how you say your last yeah. name klein cop yeah klein cop um, yeah he asks who is your favorite brother and why yeah he sent me this he told me that he asked <laughs> um <laughs> do you have more than one brother? brother i have two brothers so that one's joseph and then he's the oldest, and then the middle is Masaki. So Joseph, Masa- Masaki, Masaki, and Akane. Wait, you have <laughs> oh, so there's one with an English name, American name. Yes, yeah. Um, um, so Joseph. Okay, Joseph asked me who's my favorite brother. It's a hard <laughs> question. Um, it's got to be Masaki. I, Masaki. I, I think he's it might be Masaki. Name. Like Joseph, you know. Also, like, Joseph's the oldest, and so he, like, yeah. acts like it, and he's like, I'm better than you. Like, let me tell you all this shit. And you got to go with the younger shit. one. Like, yeah. Innocence. Masaki is just chilling. He doesn't know what he's doing, or, like, he does know what he's doing with his life, but he's like, oh, like, job hunting sucks. I was a – he, like, he, like, got his master's in jazz trombone, he's, like, oh. very good at jazz trombone, but nobody cares about if you're good at jazz trombone. Somebody cares. There's no way that's true. So, People got to care We care, Masaki. That. Also, Some people care, but like nobody wants to pay him for that, yeah. <laughs> like a yeah. regular job. Sorry, <laughs> so, <laughs> but why doesn't he change yeah. his dream, like be in an orchestra or something? I think he just, I think he also just like doesn't like the lifestyle of like having a gig and stuff. Mm. So he's pivoted into like software. Engineering. All right. Well, maybe, um, maybe you can connect him with me. Maybe I will have a job open. Yeah, exactly. Him. That'd be great. Um, but yeah, we just me and Masaki vibe a little bit more. Joseph's oh, like wow. the oldest. Well, Whoa. that one might sting for Joseph. Joseph. But, uh, <laughs> um, sorry, Joseph and I are similarly like sometimes assholes, whereas Masaki is just like chill. He's sweetheart. Um, yeah. Middle middle children don't get enough love either. So yeah, let's go with Masaki. Sorry, Joseph. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Joseph. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, you ready for the, the final fan question? Yes. From our favorite um, EBGR. Okay, it's Hubbard. Oh I don't know how to <laughs> say EB Rubber. EB Rubber. Uh, Rubber. He asks, what's your record time in the Sunday crossword and why is it so oh my God. fast? Sunday crossword? I've definitely done it in like. I usually do it in like 40 ish minutes for this whole Sunday crossword, but I often do it with my dad, in which case we go way faster. One time we did a Sunday in like 20 minutes and we were like, that was too easy. What? Like we were supposed to be here for like an hour. 
Wow. Um, yeah. Does he? I, I'm assuming Hubbard does these too. I'm know. not sure. We t we have uh, some friends on the um, you know like you can have friends on like the mini, and like you can look at the leaderboard for yeah. the New York Times mini. Yeah. Huh. Um, that's a big outlet for my competitive drive. Oh wait, is that um, is he talking about that version then? I'm not sure. He might be. He one time he sent me a screenshot or something of his time, and I was like, "Is this supposed to be fast?" <laughs> wow. <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Wow. Reconsider where you're at, Hub. I've gotten sub uh, 10 seconds on the mini before. Ooh, which damn. Is, what is the mini? What do you do? Like nine. It's just like a mini crossword that's like very small. Sub and I 10. Do it as fast as I can. <laughs> um, Alika is very good at it too. She's my. Your my, main my, competition? Yeah, my nemesis in terms of mini crossword. All right, Hub, you got to share your time later. Um, <laughs> apparently, it's not very good. So, it's not. <laughs> All right, Kins, any um, any final questions for no our guest no. tonight? No, that was great. We 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 hit that two hour mark, which we love to we love to get to that two hour. <laughs> Do we? I don't know. Oh, I guess <laughs> apparently we have feedback that we uh, go for too long, but. This is what we do. Whatever. Consume. You're, you're just weeding out the true fans. Yeah, that's yeah, the feedback yeah, I don't care about. I don't Me care too. About that we're, we're doing this for like, fun. If we're having if a you good like conversation, a short podcast, listen to I don't know, I don't know, the mini crossword listen version to of yeah. crossword. We're we're the, we're the Sunday crossword of podcasts. We're no mini podcast yeah. here, right? Because too much of today, it's like short TikTok, long like you know not long short you know attention Short span. we're here for the long drawn yeah. out conversations a true debate you know <laughs> that's what we um that's what we strive for here. Akane, no, any, but, any yeah. questions for us before we say goodbye oh man i should have prepared something <laughs> no worries uh <laughs> i don't really have anything in particular what what's your favorite thing about the podcast <laughs> oh that's a good one do you want to go first kins I just like talking about these things. I think it's fun. Like even like today we weren't planning on going into feedback, but I love thinking about those yeah. things. And I want to be able to think about them more, maybe narrow down, like get some real concrete things figured out. Or maybe yeah. I just think about them on my own and then share those. But I just like talking to people about that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's cool. You get like different, you know, you hear different, because I, I honestly like asking similar questions to different guests and hearing their takes on it. And then you can kind of like put together different things and you learn from that. And yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. Um, for me, a, f a couple things. Uh, one, it's just fun. It's fun to talk. It's like, it's an excuse for us to talk every week. And usually that means we're talking to somebody that we're interested in talking to, not just me and Kins and Quinn. Um, and it's fun. It's just having that, uh, it's what, what is that? It's, a. Uh, it's just a construct to hang out sort of, um, mm -hmm. it forces it's like us practice. to practice. It. Yeah. It's like practice. And in the same way, I like, you know, it is fun and I like being shitty at something and getting better at it. And in this, I feel like in this format, it kind of just makes us do it because um, it's not like we have a shit ton of listeners, but we have enough people telling us like, Hey, that was stupid. Or like, Hey, that was cool. <laughs> or I liked it when you did this or maybe think about, I, I, I love, I love being thrown in the fire and just, uh, trying to get a little bit better at it. And I watch a lot of people who do podcasts and it seems fun. Probably not enough. Hey, that was stupid feedback. We need more. Yeah. Hey, that was stupid feedback. Like, there's I, a lot of those people probably feedback, aren't. Which they're probably not great, listening but, though. The, I crave <laughs> more. I get no. I've well, gotten a well, lot of hey, that, like your technical you... stuff. Your audio is not great, uh, which I'm figuring out still. Not your audio, no. like the levels in general. No, but um, my levels. Why am I not loud? I used to be so. <laughs> no, loud. I can make you out. I can. We can do that. Make post. Me loud. It's just like. But I want to. I want to. I liked when my bar went up to the red. I don't, it barely goes up. Okay. To I'll yellow. put you in the red in post. Um, yeah, put me in the red. 
There's other other things. We get feedback that Kins talks too much sometimes. <laughs> Where well, I don't see That's that funny. feedback. Why does no one tell me that feedback? Uh, I don't know. Uh, That's um, bullshit. And those people need to say it to my face, and we can have a long, drawn out conversation. Okay. About it. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> okay. Well, let me just end with a couple words here. Yeah. Um, I just wanted. To... <laughs> Okay. Uh, Akane, thanks so much for joining. Um, Thank you for having me. I like texted Kim's like, you got to get some like women on here. Here we go. Okay. (laughs) Getting us going. Um, Yeah. Uh, Good luck with the Elf and Glow season. Um, Thank you. We'll be out there April April 8th for the home opener against. Fuck yeah. Who? Utah. Utah. Again. Oh, yeah. Let's get a little re- revenge against Utah. Cue the music, Mikey. Come All right. Down. I will cue the music. <laughs> I'm leaving a little dead air time because I might edit it out. Um, All righty. Thanks, guys. This was a good one. I feel good about this. I feel good about where we're at. All right. I kind of stick around for a minute here, but uh, okay. peace out, everybody. Peace.